You're going to be hearing a lot more about this evil Britisher that came to Jamaica and his method of enslavement was cruel and wicked and as such passed down from one generation to the next and it is now in the minds embedded deep in the minds of our youths their method that is being used today to kill to terrorize the Jamaican people came directly through this lineage of Thomas Thistlewood. This is part two of a series that we're going to be learning more about this man because in order for us to move forward we must know who our enemies were, what their intentions were and how did they move in kind of those evil intentions. So today we're going to be talking about early life and migration to Jamaica of Thomas Thistlewood. How we oversee Egypt and then the Takis War. Thomas Thistlewood was born in Topholm in Lincolnshire, England. The second son of a farmer, he was educated in Atworth, West Yorkshire, where he received training in mathematics and practical science. At age six, he inherited 200 pounds sterling from his father, but most of the estate was given to his brother, thereby giving him the opportunity to leave England. He began training as a surveyor, but after a friend and fellow surveyor reportedly went mad and threw himself into the sea, Thistlewood reflected that, now my hopes Again, Trevor Bernard concludes that the friend in question was William Wallace, though it is also possible the man in question was James Crawford. After a two-year voyage on one of the East Indian Company ship as a supercargo, Thistle would return to England briefly at 29 and decided to seek employment in Jamaica. On the 1st of February 1750, he boarded the Flamborough to Savlanamar, Jamaica. He had letters of recommendation, but no arranged employment. He arrived on the 4th of May 1750. Tissable began his Caribbean life as an overseer, first at Vineyard Pen, a cattle pen that provided meat and vegetable provision to sugar plantations. He then worked primarily at Egypt, a sugar plantation owned by John Cope and William Darrell, where he was an overseer from 1751 to 1767. The plantation was in Westmoreland Parish, where he supervised numerous slaves in sugar production. Egypt comprised 1,500 acres of land of which 1,200 consisted of water and morass and were thus unsuitable for sugar production. Only 150 acres were in cane and Thistlewood's first crop was so poor that Darrell considered switching Egypt from sugar to a cattle pen. During these years, Thistlewood gradually acquired slaves of his own whom he rented out to other planters. This also when he met Fiba, one of many slaves with whom he was involved sexually, but one with whom he formed a long-lasting relationship. The relationship was tempestuous and they often quarrel. Many enslaved people fled Egypt, but like other plantation owners and overseers, Thistlewood often added Jamaican maroons to hunt runaway slaves. He writes about several meetings with Leeward Maroon leaders, Kudger and Okompon, in the 1750s and the 1760s. In late 1752, when out for a stroll, Thistlewood came across Congo Sam, a slave of his who had run away a month before, 
and tried to recapture them. Sam attacked Thistlewood with a dull machete and inflicted some minor injuries on him before another slave, London, came to Thistlewood's assistance and they captured Sam. Two other slaves, Abigail and Bella, refused to help and supported Sam's attempt to gain freedom. In the trial that followed, Abigail and Bella were given 100 lashes each, but because London refused to testify against Sam, he was acquitted. Slaves and many Jamaican plantations were not properly fed and often resorted to stealing cane. In 1755 to 1756, a slave named Scotland was caught stealing corn and plantings at Egypt. The watchman shot him and chopped him to death. Now let's move further into Taki's war and let's see the man of Thomas Thistlewood. During Taki's war in 1760 and subsequent slave revolts that decayed, Thistlewood wrote about the fear planters felt about the uprising possible success. He commended the Maroons of Cogetown, Trelawney Town, for their bravery in fighting the rebels. Thistlewood wrote about rebel slaves killing white men, such as a Mr. Smith and a Captain Hoare. He was extremely anxious about the rebellion's progress and expressed disappointment with Royal Navy sailors who got drunk instead of fighting the rebels. Thistlewood noted that several of his own slaves were becoming disrespectful to him and put it down to inspiration they were receiving from news of Taki's revolt. In the years that followed, Thistlewood wrote about attempts to put down smaller spin-off rebellions, especially the ones in Western Jamaica, led by Apongo, a slave belonging to Cope. According to Thistlewood, Apongo was a prince in Guinea who paid homage to the king of Dahomey. Thistlewood claimed that Apongo was surprised and took prisoner when hunting and slowed for a slave. Thistlewood wrote about John Jones' house being burned by rebel slaves who initially defeated a contingent of white militias, killing a number of soldiers. Despite his anxiety, Thistlewood still found time to rape several of his slaves. Eventually, the revolt was suppressed on both the eastern and western ends of the island. A number of slaves in western Jamaica, including some who belonged to Cope, such as Apongo, were executed in the aftermath. For their part in the rebellion, two of Thistlewood's Egypt slaves, Kwaku, and Abraham were sentenced to be resold in the Spanish Caribbean colonies. In 1766, Thistlewood was a part of the militia that put down another slave revolt inspired by Taki, this time in Western Jamaica. In 1776, he was again armed as white Jamaicans had rumors of another rebellion which did not materialize. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard more of this infamous devil, Thomas Thistlewood. We want you Jamaicans to teach every Jamaican boy and girl about this great piece of history, how not to adapt this terrible destructive lifestyle that has been killing us for well over 50 years. Jamaica, if we do not learn of our past, hold it in our mindset, then we're doomed to fail. We did not follow the teaching of the right honorable Marcus Garvey. We did not follow the examples of Sam Sharp. We did not certainly follow the example of Paul Bogle. Neither did we follow the example of Queen Nana. Jamaica, let's rise up as this great race of people that we are. Stand up and be counted. Stand up and be a part of your destiny. Because your destiny is that of kings and queens. I love Jamaica. 
I gave up a life of luxury to be standing here today, the 4th of January 2022, and to be able to read about this great man, this wickedly great man, Thomas Tisselwood, and to be able to use my channel to impart the atrocities that this evil bastard have done from the 1750s and it is still being perpetrated today, 2022. Stand up Jamaica and be counted. Stand up and be the part of the great lineage that we all are, kings and queens of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, part three will be coming tomorrow. Stay tuned. Please share these videos. Please like these videos. Please make your comments on these videos so that it can reach the four corners of the earth. And this truth that was brought to light by my sister in Queen Africa must be taught and absorbed by us all. Thank you very much for listening. You do have a great day. Rastafari.